Good morning, Tatu. Good morning, everyone. I hope you recovered from the party last night. Uh, I'm super excited to be here and uh, sharing some tips for the next 20 minutes about maximizing your chances to get your startup uh, fund them, funded. Uh, my name is Leonardo Saroni, and I'm a partner of uh, Prana Venture, which is a European venture capital headquartered in Milan uh, that Lisa, myself, and Alessio launched last year. We raised um, 35 million, and we do invest in seed and post-seed startups with a first average ticket of 500,000 uh, uh, euros, so half a million. Let me start with a number. This is the amount of uh, pitches and projects, basically, that we have received in the first year of operation. This means that every day, in average, we get four startups approaching, asking for money. And guess what? Out of 1,486 startups, we managed to invest in nine of them. This is less than 1%. It means that 99% of the companies, of the startups, or of the projects are rejected. And this could be for many reasons. This could be because we didn't like the idea, we didn't think you were solving the problem in the right way, or maybe we didn't like the team. So today, I thought I'd be sharing 12 tips based on the different decks that we've seen uh, over the last year to improve the chances of make that pitch get you a meeting and hopefully be funded as well. So first one, whether that's your title of the presentation or your landing page, it's really important to make a first good impression. This is like in real life, when you're doing an handshake with somebody that you're meeting for the first time. You're just not doing this, right? I mean, you can do an handshake, but you're also saying, nice to meet you, nice to meet you, Leonardo, nice to meet you, Leonardo, from Aventure. So the way you're going to present yourself is going to make a very good uh, impression. And for this, I'm going to use some example. The very first thing you have to do in your landing page or in your title of your deck, obviously, you need to put your name and your logo. But that's not enough. So if I look at these startups that is in our portfolio, it's called Be Safe. They definitely put a logo and a name. But what is going to tell you? Which industry is this company operating in? Is this cybersecurity? Is it InsurTech? It doesn't tell you much, right? So next to the logo and to the name, I want to make sure that you also add an image uh, that clearly explains what your product is about and also one line that explains what your company is doing. So in this specific case of Voyage, uh, clearly I can immediately see from the image that they are in the automotive industry, specifically they are in the autonomous driving sector, and they're saying that they're delivering on the promise to make self-driving uh, available right now. Sometimes your product is not so straightforward to understand, and sometimes you don't even need an image to explain what you're doing. Sometimes you can do that in just four words. Look at this one. They're doing AR, marketing, SaaS platform. We were just talking about augmented reality a few minutes ago. When I open this landing page or when I open this speech, I know that I'm talking to a startup that has developed a platform. It's a SaaS startup. So if I'm a VC and I don't operate in SaaS, I might already close the deck, and I'm not going to look into this. Or if it actually I operate in SaaS businesses, I want to learn more. I know that the technology is augmented reality, and they tell me in which specific field they're operating, um, which is marketing, right? So they want to augment reality in your marketing mix. Even nice the way they play with the word marketing and AR. Can you explain your startup in just four words? I think this is a good exercise for you to do and try to see if you can pass your business idea, the problem you're trying to solve, in just four words. So once you explain me what the business is about, we definitely want to understand who's behind the venture. And team is the most important thing. 99% um, of the time that we decide not to invest in a, in a startup or in a project is because of the team. Even if we are intrigued by the idea, by the problem, by the solution, we spend time with the founders, we try to see how do they work, uh, how the team is composed. And most of the time, if you decide not to go for an investment, is because there's something wrong with the team. So you really need to spend as much time as possible explaining you know, the, 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 the main highlights of the team. So starting from who's running the show, who's the CEO, who are the, key, the leaders of the, of the startups, what do they do? Also, what advisors do you have? I think advisors gives already an idea whether you can leverage the community and the ecosystem. Um, so you're probably being able to involve strategic people that can give you access to clients, suppliers. I also want to understand who has invested in this startup, right? So if you already had a round, like in this case, you want to say that you've been backed by Prana Venture. So in this specific case, they're pitching to a Series A now. And this is how 
they're presenting their startup. You want to tell me an idea of how big the team is? In this case, 25 people. Uh, the team size gives me already an idea of how much cash you might be burning every month, for instance. Um, it gives me an idea of how labor intensive versus capital intensive the startup can be. Um, so really important that you provide the specific details. But even more, try to go uh, deeper, right? So when you're talking about the key people, whether these are co-founders or uh, people that have leadership roles, I want to know in which companies they worked in the past. And I don't just want to work, I don't just want to know that they work for Booking.com, for instance. I did work in Booking.com for 12 years. And if I had to pitch my, uh, if I had to work for Ariel, I think they'd be more interested in my profile if I told them that I've been running advertising technology or that I was the global head of SEO. If I was in customer service, probably my profile, even if I was at Booking.com, is not really a fit. So try to explain for, you know, if you work for a tech company, what is the role that you play there? And once, you know, once you prepare this slide, once you go into explaining the team, remember what as an investor we're trying to look for. First of all, we want to see complementarity in terms of art skills. So who's running growth for this company? Who is the finance guy playing with cash? Who's the visionary who's setting the strategy? But also complementarity of soft skills. Can you work together as a team? How much industry expertise do you have? That's something that should also come up. And it's fine you know, if you're not necessarily the industry expert as a co-founder, but maybe you are pulling in people in your team that have experience from that industry. Or maybe you have advisors from that industry that can help you. And then I want to have the feeling that this team can actually run, so that there are people that maybe are not the best visionary, but they can actually run the business, they can run the ops, and uh, they can manage people. Because the company hopefully is going to grow, so I will have to hire more people, the first managers. I need to have a feeling that there will be people being able to, to, to scale the company. And more impo for probably the most important thing, I want to see full commitment. Uh, when I get a pitch, and I like the idea, and they tell me, uh, Leonardo, if we get money from you, we're going to do this. I'm like, no, that, that's not how it works. Uh, I want you to see that you're doing this before you even get the money. Um, and, and really showing commitment, showing uh, passion and dedication to your idea is the most important thing. Then when you talk about the thing, in your storytelling, you should always uh, consider when is it the right time to present my team. And I think it really depends on the team and there's no good and bad solution. Uh, but I would say, if your team is a rock star, like in this case, so they tell us, hey, we're a rock star team, we know it's all about people and execution, here are the team with diverse and complementary skills, and then I have a breakdown who are the founders, all the companies they work for. Well, I think these teams really rock. I would start my pitch saying, this is us, this is what we're going to do, this is what we will be building. But sometimes it's totally fine not to have a rock star team, right? Maybe you didn't have uh, any startup before, maybe you didn't work for a tech company, uh, no exit before, it's fine. So my advice in that case is to put the team a little bit later in the storytelling. So again, for Be Safe, this is their team, except uh, apart from the fact that you see they're all Italian, all good looking, but if I look at their pedigree, they, they don't really have much experience. They haven't done any exit, they haven't worked for any tech company. But what I know about this company is that in the first uh, year and a half of operation, they have done 2 million revenue out of 1.7 million um, that they have raised. So they're already making more money than what they've raised. I think that's a great line to use for your storytelling and then tell the fund, hey, this is what we did with this average team. Imagine if you give us 5 million and we can build a rock star team, what the business is going to be about. So again, if your results, uh, if your traction is more impressive than the team, I would definitely start with that and then show the team afterwards. So once we have explained what the business is about uh, and the team, you want to go uh, and be a little bit more specific about the problem you're trying to solve. And really be specific. So augmented reality, um, you know, we were talking about this in the, in the previous session. Uh, what are the issues within augmented reality? It's very complex, it's low, seems it's a technology only for, uh, for big brands, it's very expensive. So if this company wants to democratize augmented reality, you know, this is a good way to explain all the problems that they will be uh, solving. And also, not just the problems that you're solving, but who are you solving these problems for? Going back to the example of BeSafe, it's an insurtech company, and they, 
um, they offer a refundable, non-refundable rate. So when you um, book a hotel room, the hotel will always get money, and the customer has a chance, even if it's a non-refundable rate, to cancel the reservation without losing the money. So in this case, you can see that the benefit is actually for both stakeholders. As a hotelier, I always have the certainty to get money for every transaction. And as a customer, I know I can book, I can pay in advance, but if I get COVID, for instance, my money will be uh, refunded. But probably the most important thing when you explain the problem is not um, what you're trying to solve, but why did you start this venture? Why do you want to solve this problem, right? Because if I look at 1,000 pitches, probably they're solving 1,000 different problems, or maybe the same 100 problems, because there would be 10 startups trying to solve the same problem. And I probably will, will forget how uh, they are solving the problem. But what I will always remember is why that guy wants to solve the problem. So in this case, Alessandro will tell me the story that he was a hotelier in Rome, and uh, when COVID hit, half of the room were canceled. He lost most of the money. He couldn't pay the rent. So he decided to create a, a solution, which is a rate backed with insurance products, which enable hoteliers to get the money and customers to travel with flexibility. So I'll definitely you know, remember that story and carry with me when I need to decide whether to invest in the company or not. Once I've explained the problem, I go deeper in the solution. And again, here I try to explain what are the different use cases. So going back to augmented reality, I can use augmented reality in e-commerce. I can use it to um, link the offline, offline world with the online world. Uh, to, to do some gamification, and I can use that across different industries. So again, try to be specific. Um, features of your product, this is a different startup in which I invested, uh, creates Michelin uh, star milk kit. Basically, in this kit, you have all the ingredients to replicate a signature dish from a famous Michelin star chef, and you can clearly see from the concept that, you know, even if you need salt, butter, uh, raspberry, whatever ingredients, you'll find it exactly in the product. Also, show me a little bit of traction. So any proofs of concept that you have, any clients. So again, Lavazza, which is an Italian uh, coffee brand, was using this startup um, to maximize the experience of their packaging. And with augmented reality, you could get access to uh, new content. I, think, I thought this was a great example. If Lavazza wants to do this, probably I can do that also for Ferrero and many other Italian brands in, uh, in fast consumer movie goods. It's also a good idea to explain the solutions, uh, highlighting what the benefits are. Because as a founder, I think it's totally normal that you will be spending time explaining the technicalities of your solution. Uh, but as an investor, I'm more interested in what the benefit of those solutions are. So for instance, uh, if I want to promote Michelin star cuisine and make it accessible to everyone, I will tell you that, well, it, it's not true that it takes so much time. You can actually make a signature dish at home in 15 minutes. Or it's not a problem any longer about finding every single ingredient. You have everything in the pack. Or if you have the feeling that it's going to cost you a fortune and you have a lot of waste, not true, because in the pack you will find exactly all the ingredients, uh, pre-portion and pre dose to make that dish. So I think, it, again, it's, this is a good example of how you can explain the benefits of what your solution is about. Once you have explained the solution, you need to give an idea of how big the opportunity is. How big is the market? What is the total addressable market? How much of the market is actually serviceable? And how much of the market do you think you can actually achieve, obtain? What, what share of that? And here, you, know, you can put whatever number you think is right. Ideally, you refer to uh, some sources, some researches. But for an investor, what really matters is having the feeling that there is enough market. The market is big enough for this company to be worth something in the future. I think, personally, I find it more interesting not to look at the big number, but understanding how you're getting there. And then we go in the sixth one, which is, which is your business model and what is your distribution uh, strategy? So how are you going to distribute augmented reality, for instance? And in this specific case, they think agencies are a good medium to distribute to make uh, augmented reality um, accessible to everyone because most of the big brands will work with agencies. They don't have the experience in-house to do augmented reality. So if I, can able, if I am able to um, have a network of agencies worldwide, then I'll be able to promote augmented reality to, to most of the big brands. 
and also want to see how much money you're going to make, meaning what is the, how you're going to make money. And in the case of Be Safe, they also have a payment getaway. And it's pretty straightforward here that they're going to make 0.2% of every single transaction. As an investor, I'm also interested in sustainability of your uh, model. So I really want to understand uh, when are you going to hit break-even point? When are you going to make money? Um, how, margin, how much is the margin? How much will be the margin in the first years and afterwards? Especially these days that the market and the outlook is a little bit tough. You know, the earlier you can show that the model will be sustainable, the, b the more interested a possible uh, investor will be. Who are your competitors? Uh, again, and how do you uh, differentiate yourself from them? So in the case, again, of augmented reality, we know that for, in some cases, companies uh, you know, are positioned in, a, in what it makes augmented reality very easy to use. In some other cases, very difficult. Some it is just a one-off thing. And here, we're trying to make it accessible very easily and all the time. And also, give me an idea of how your company is going to be different from, from the other ones. So this is a good slide from Revolut that they show, compared to their competitors, all the different use cases that they can solve and what makes them different compared to competition. I also need to have a feeling of what you're going to do next. So try to put a some slides, or in your storytelling, try to talk about the evolution of your roadmap. And this could be commercial, if your product has been already uh, shipped, or it could be a technical roadmap if you need to achieve certain milestones for, for the future. But give me really an idea of, you know, next year, in two years' time, in two years' time, how the business or the product is going to evolve. Then I want to see some metrics. Uh, as an investor, I want to see some metrics, so I want to see that there is already hopefully some tractions. Uh, and ideally, these metrics are fresh. So you don't show me data of two years ago. You show me data of this quarter, because six months is already a uh, life ago in startup phase. And if you don't have metrics, you can rely on competitive metrics. Again, uh, it shows me that you made your homework, you made some research, and you went in details to have an idea of what a customer could cost you, for instance. Then it's pitching day. You're coming to, to the meeting. Uh, I really expect you to, to have clarity around uh, the, um, the, the stage in which you are. Um, so if you are, in this case, looking for a Series A, you wouldn't come and pitch to Prana Venture because we only do seed and post-seed uh, deals. Or if you are just at the beginning and you have an idea, again, we're probably not the, the right fit. But it's important that you have clear what's the life cycle of a startup and when you're asking money. Also, you need to know how much money you're asking. So put that in your slide, in your presentation. Not knowing how much money you're asking, for me, means that you also don't know how you're going to spend the money, because you haven't done the exercise of knowing exactly what is the use of the funds. How much money are you going to put in marketing? How much money are you going to put in engineering? And again, when you say, I'm going to put half a million in marketing, what is marketing? Are you going to do offline marketing, digital marketing? Digital marketing, OK. Are you going to do branding? Are you going to do performance marketing? I'm going to do performance marketing. OK. Are you going to buy your customers on Meta or on Google? You see, I really want to see that you've done some studies, some validation uh, of how you're going to use the money. Also, give me an idea of who is already interested in investing in the startups. So do you have any soft commitments, any hard commitment? Hey, there's only 50,000 euros remain for these startups. It makes me already feel intrigued, right? If you tell me well, I need a million, but nobody has given me 10 euros yet, probably the, the storytelling is a bit weak. And when you come to pitch day, do your homework. So again, study the fund, look at the press releases, which are the latest deals that they've done, how much money have they raised. If they have already funded a competitor in your niche, most likely they're not going to give you money, right? Because they have a strategy of uh, diversifying their portfolio. And lastly, uh, the design. For me, this is uh, like the, the cover of a book. When you go to a library or when you go on Amazon, you're not choosing a book to read because of the content. You haven't read the book yet, in fact. But you're choosing the book because of the cover, right? So also pay attention to the design uh, and the way um, and, and the tone of voice of how you present uh, your pitch. Time is over, and I want to leave you with uh, a bonus tip. Uh, actually, I believe when uh, somebody's pitching 
they should always have this in mind. And not just when pitching, but actually when, uh, when, uh, when you go into startup world. Often we tend to be in love with the solutions that we have in mind. I think great entrepreneurs and uh, the best startuppers are those that are in love with the uh, problem they want to solve. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. <laughs>